Welcome back to the Sports News Analysis YouTube channel. My name is Mike. I'm continuing my 2013 NFL season previews. This preview uh, is for the New York Jets. The Jets coming off of a uh, very subpar season last year, uh, finishing 6-10, and coming off of an 8-8 eight and eight season the year before. So they take a step back last year. Um, it was a situation where everything that could go wrong for the Jets, did go wrong. A lot of the preseason prognostications before last year coming true. Uh, the Tim Tebow acquisition turned to be a, a disaster, both on the field and off the field. As a result of everything that went on with the team last year, uh, the organization went through a little bit of a transformation. Mike Tannenbaum fired. John Idzik comes in as the general manager. Mike Pettin, the defensive coordinator, leaves for Buffalo. Dennis Thurman gets promoted from being the secondaries coach into that role. And, of course, uh, Tony Sperano, who you know just turned out from what I could see to be a, a terrible offensive coordinator, uh, he, le he, gets, he gets let go, and they hire Marty, Marty Morningweg, who's spent the last several years as the offensive coordinator of the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, the one person that stays in the mix here is head coach Rex Ryan. You know, He's under a situation now where the GM that's in place now is not the GM that hired him. So the thinking is uh, he's on thin ice this year. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, in the free agency period for the Jets, it was more about what they lost than pretty much what they gained. Uh, they lose Laron Landry. They lose Mike DeVito. They lose Sione Bouha. Uh, they release uh, guys by the likes of Bart Scott. They release uh, Calvin Pace, who they later resigned. So you're looking at basically half of the starters on offense and defense uh, from last year are no longer on the roster for the Jets. Um, and then moving forward, some of the guys they picked up in the offseason, uh, they acquired guys on the cheap. They either acquired younger guys they think can step into a starting role, like a Chris Ivory, for instance, or they ended up getting uh, veteran stopgap type players, like the two guards, Willie Colon and Steven Peterman. Uh, they also uh, recently re-signed Braylon Edwards. They also signed Kellen Winslow uh, to fulfill the tight end role vacated by Dustin Keller, another guy um, who left via free agency. So you see Idzik's strategy. He cut a lot of payroll, of course, with the big move, the biggest move, uh, being the trading of Darrell Revis, uh, which, you know, hey, look, let's face it, they just lost their best player. Okay, a guy they weren't willing to pay when they're in sort of a uh, rebuilding mode. They trade Revis uh, for the 13th pick overall um, from the Buccaneers. And you can see Idzik's strategy is to you know, shave payroll, uh, get a little thin in that area, acquire younger guys. If they do get, if they, you know, the veterans they did go out and get in free agency, they're guys that are signed to one, two year deals, very low risk, and they'll try to build some depth. Uh, if you look at where Idzik came from in Seattle, you know that's their major uh, claim to fame or, or how they were able to build their team so quick through the draft, smart moves via free agency, and build a lot of depth in their team. And I think that's what you're seeing Idzik bring here uh, to the Jets. Speaking of the draft, the Jets would pick 9-13 and 13 overall in the first round to D. Milliner from Alabama, uh, who is not yet signed, uh, but the thinking is they'll get a deal done here soon. They also draft Sheldon Richardson, the defensive tackle from Missouri. So that's who they get with picks 9 and 13. Of course, in the second round, uh, the much uh, ballyhooed pick of uh, Geno Smith, the quarterback from West Virginia. I'll get into the whole quarterback situation here in a little while. And in the third and fourth rounds, you know they get Brian Winters from Kent State, a guard, Ode Abushi from Virginia in the fourth round, who was a tackle in college, thought to project as a guard. And I think what you'll see is you'll see those two sort of move into the role that uh, Willie Colon and Steven Peterman have. If one of those two should get injured or not perform, you have two young guys waiting in the wings. And that's what I mean by building that depth uh, that Izik uh, basically was hired to do. Trim the payroll, add depth, get better players on the roster. If you look at the Jets roster last year, it was just void of talent. I know it sounds basic. Hey, a team's not good. They don't have good players. But that was the case for the Jets. So, you know, slowly uh, building that depth. As far as the three biggest question marks I see for the Jets heading into this season, um, number three is developing some sort of pass rush. Uh, I think some that's a main reason why they drafted Sheldon Richardson. I think you saw out of all the interior linemen in the draft, uh, he might have been the, have the, have the best potential as a pass rusher uh, from that interior of the defensive line. You had Muhammad Wilkerson take a gigantic step forward uh, last year, borderline uh, Pro Bowl performer. Uh, 
you know, can they provide the pass rush without blitzing uh, so Rex Ryan can get creative there um, in the secondary and with his linebackers when they do need the blitz? Uh, Rex is, when Rex has his best defenses, it's when he can be unpredictable with his blitzes where teams don't have time to scheme for them. If he constantly has to blitz to get pressure on the quarterback, they sort of lose that edge. So you look at a guy like Wilkerson, a guy like Sheldon Richardson, okay, Quinton Copels who is moving uh, to the 3-4 outside linebacker spot. All right, uh, we'll see how he adjusts. That's going to be a big deal. He's, he's a pass rush specialist at North Carolina. They move him from the defensive line to an outside linebacker position. He's taking a little bit of a risk there. Uh, that's why they re-signed Calvin Pace in case, you know, Copels doesn't really work out uh, at that outside linebacker spot. But the pass rush without blitzing, it's really been a problem for the Jet defense the last couple years, and we'll see how they adjust to that. Question mark number two for me is that playmaker issue I talked about before. Who is going to make plays on offense? You know, you, you could blame Mark Sanchez, okay? Uh, or you could also blame the fact that he had zero playmakers around him last year, uh, whether it was the Clyde Gates of the world or the um, uh, Hill, the young receiver out of Georgia Tech they drafted who clearly wasn't ready to play last year. You know, they did get some production out of Jeremy Curley, which I think was unexpected and something they could build on. But the Jets, they had, they had their very, uh, Sean Green did not lift up, live up to expectations. They had the injury uh, to Santonio San Holmes. Dustin Keller was banged up last year. Their offensive line was atrocious. When you add all those things up, you have a terrible offense. Can some guys step up and make plays? Guys like a Chris Ivory. Um, who the Jets um, are very high on, who I'm very high on, a guy that was buried on the depth chart in New Orleans, but a guy that I think can really make a difference Okay, here with the Jets. He has a chance. It's his starting job. You throw in a little bit of Mike Goodson if he can stay out of trouble, a little bit of Bilal Powell. But look for Chris Ivory. If Peterman, Cologne, all right, Nick Mangold at center, and then, of course, you know, DeBrickashaw and Austin Howard on the outside, I think they have the potential to have a pretty good running game, which I think I don't think any anybody's focusing on if those two guards can stay healthy. And uh, look for Chris Ivory to be that first sort of playmaker that can break through in the running game. And hopefully the Jets are hoping to get a lot out of Santonio San Holmes and Braylon Edwards um, like they did when the Jets you know, reached the AFC Championship game um, in 2010 when both of those guys were playing at a pretty high level with Mark Sanchez at quarterback. So, um, again, playmakers, someone stepping forward to make plays, the number two question mark for the Jets. The number one question mark for the Jets, as it was last year, will be the quarterback position. You have Mark Sanchez and Geno Smith battling out in training camp. We'll see who gets the nod. I firmly believe they'll give Mark Sanchez sort of his last chance here. And if he falters um, or if the team starts to lose, which probably are going to go hand in hand, uh, they'll give the keys to Geno Smith. The good thing about drafting a quarterback where they drafted Smith is very little risk. Okay, we're talking about like a maybe a four-year contract worth a little bit over $4 million total. Not much of a risk there. If Geno Smith doesn't work out, it doesn't hurt them whatsoever. So I didn't mind the pick of Geno Smith. I don't know if he's the quarterback of the future. You don't really know with quarterbacks until you see him thrown in the fire. But getting some consistent play out of the quarterback position, if they are able um, to run the ball and establish a run game, uh, you know, that's really the only chance the Jets have. Solid run game to set up play action passing and, um, you know, a defense um, that can put pressure on the quarterback because you look at the defense, the back end was still good last year with Laron Landry, who's no longer there, replaced by his brother Dewan. But secondary was solid with the likes of Antonio Cromartie. We'll see who wins that second cornerback spot, whether it's Kyle Wilson or D. Milliner. I know as a, you know, Jeff fans have to be hoping for Milliner to win that spot because if Kyle Wilson is better than him, uh, you know, Milliner is probably not as good as we all think, quite frankly. But we'll see how the Jets' season unfolds here. I look for them to be in that six to eight win range, only because I don't know what the quarterback situation is going to be like. Uh, I, you know, it's 56 turnovers the last two seasons. You can't count on Mark Sanchez having a great year this year, which is I think is what's going to need to happen for the Jets to get to that like nine win mark, which is why I like them between six and eight wins this year. Let me know what you guys think of the Jets. Hit me up in the YouTube comments. Hit me up on Twitter at S News Analysis. Guys, I'm previewing all 32 teams here, so be sure to check the other ones out here. Thanks as always for listening and have a great night.